to whoever is listening to today's podcast of Do You Speak Geek? You should know that the current climate that we are in right now, we are faced with two deadly viruses. One being the COVID-19 that we all know about. But there's another one that has reared its ugly head. It's always been here. And I personally fear that it may not go anywhere ever. And that virus is racism. There are too many instances where people of black and brown skin have lost their lives or have had their lives ruined by people who are racist, bigots, whether they be citizens or the police. I myself have been subjected to racism on a personal level. And it's not fun. It's not funny, but with things that are going on now, I like to believe that we will see a, an end to racism. I like to believe that we will see things get better, but it's hard to see that things are going to get better the way they are right now. So this is coming from me, Chauncey Dickens. We have to continue to do better so that we can be better. Black lives matter. Brown lives matter. I'm a blurred first. And that is where I stand. That is where this show stands. And that's what it will be until we can not only emphasize and recognize and stamp the fact that black lives matter, but that we should also save black lives. So going into the open banter of the show here, I have some thoughts about how HBO Max launched. Now, there are several people who feel like there are huge differences between HBO Max, HBO Go, and HBO Now. And there are differences. Some people have are finding it difficult to know what the differences between the three are. So, just to kind of give you guys an idea here, HBO Go, for example, if you have HBO as a subscription from your cable provider, HBO Go is an application which is pretty much video on demand. Now, HBO Now is for people who don't have that subscription from a cable provider, but they still want HBO and get that on-demand experience. That's where HBO Now comes into play. Now, HBO Max is pretty much both of those things, but it also includes other content as well. Now, Pleasant surprises for me from HBO Max have been the Not Too Late show with Elmo. It's hilarious. And with the guest up there, they are even funnier. Uh, multiple franchises that are on the streaming service like Police Academy, Lord of the Rings, Alien, and the entire Harry Potter series. Disappointments for me personally, I don't like the fact that there's not a single Superman film on this service. I mean, you would have think that at least they would have had Man of Steel with the fact of them touting that they have the entire DC extended universe on there. But it's kind of like, let's say Disney Plus was touting the fact that they have, we got the entire MCU, but they don't have Iron Man 1. And I'm not trying to compare Man of Steel to Iron Man 1. And what I am saying is that Man of Steel pretty much kicked off the entire DC Extended Universe, and you don't have that movie in effect. You don't have it in rotation. So I think they should really fix that part. Also, there are no Nolan Batman films. Like, how are you not going to have 
nothing from the, the Nolan verse, which is pr- pretty much arguably the best Batman films from a lot of fans standpoints, maybe not mine, but they are great, great movies and you should at least have them on this service. But I do love the fact that I could binge Big Bang Theory, one of my favorite shows, and hopefully this stream, this streaming service will get better and add more content and pretty much tie up those loose ends when it comes to Warner Brothers content. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who likes to watch TV and movies. Blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 31. Alright people, welcome to Do You Speak Geek? I am your host Nick. Thank you for listening once again. If you join us for the first time, welcome to DYSG. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the podcast. Spreaker is the home team. Please go to Spreaker.com, subscribe to the podcast, like the episodes. And if you haven't listened on Spreaker, you can listen to other avenues as well. We have this podcast also on Spotify. It's on iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts, and also Google Podcasts. So wherever you listen to your podcasts, go check us out there. Also, the social media is where you can follow us on what we're doing. Facebook at DYSG Media, Twitter at underscore Do You Speak Geek, and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. YouTube is where you can find the Dono and Daddy Show. Next week, we got a new episode of First Friday Fights coming up. So keep an eye out for that. Please be sure to go to the channel, subscribe, Hulk smash that bell for all notifications, like the episodes and the videos, and please leave your comments. We really want to know what you guys think. And as always, do you speak geek.com is on the way. Nothing really big as far as the geek world news that's this week here. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into source wall, man. You come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. (laughs) There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. We got the pull list for this week. Star Wars, Dr. Aphra number one. New crew, new mission. With the Rebel Alliance back on the run after their defeat at the Battle of Hoth, it's never been a more dangerous time for outlaws, scoundrels, and the errant rogue archaeologists to make their new way into the galaxy. But after a string of bad luck and near escapes, Dr. Aphra is back on the job. She's been keeping a low profile, jobs are scarce, and credits are even scarcer. But the promise of the score of a lifetime is a chance too good for her to pass up. And to find the cursed rings of Vale, Afro will need a crew of treasure hunters the likes of which the galaxy has never seen before. Please check this one out. It's been a long-awaited one. Justice League 45 is another pull list pick we have here. Spirit of Vengeance glows global after spending untold time in isolation. The Spectre is back, and his thirst for retribution will ripple across the Earth. As old wounds are reopened under the Spectre's unstoppable influence, it's up to the Justice League to stop the conflict. But how can they act on a global stage when they must first contend with their own resentments? Kind of a lot of little inner turmoil going on there, but we'll see what happens with that. And we've got Venom number 25, special oversized 25th issue. Venom Island finale, caught between a Brock and a hard place. Eddie must make a life-altering decision. How does Eddie move on from the events of Venom Island? Now in Source Wall news, DC is canceling over 20 comics from their upcoming schedule. 
now, DC has made several changes to its schedule and distribution methods due to the coronavirus pandemic, and they are continuing to adapt and make more changes. The latest change has to do with several of its upcoming schedule reprint issues in the facsimile and dollar comic lines, as 22 issues between the two brands have been canceled. The majority come from the dollar comics, with the 18 books being canceled, and the other four from facsimile. Now, for the facsimile, we have titles such as Green Lantern 76, Batman 321, Man Bat number 1, and The Flash 135. Now, the dollar comics cancellations include Batman 13, Batman 450, Batman 663, reprints of Catwoman 1, Checkmate, Detective Comics 826, Green Lantern number 1, and several, several others. No reason has been given for the cancellations, but it seems most likely that these releases were deemed non-essential for the current marketplace. DC made several changes to its release processes over the course of the pandemic, even going as far as to alter its distribution methods while Diamond was not shipping new books to retailers. They also released several digital first series, including Teen Titans and The Batman Adventure Continues, a series that picks up where the original Batman animated series left off. Well, I kind of hope they get their things together here. I've been missing out on getting a lot of comics. Um, it's kind of hard to gauge what actually is and isn't coming out throughout the weeks. I mean, even me just bringing you guys the news on the podcast and bringing you news on these issues coming out, it's kind of hard to gauge what actually really is coming out or what isn't. So I really hope that things hurry up and get back to normal as far as comics coming out. So that way we know what to go buy, what to go get, what we should be reading, and what we should be preparing to read. Let's jump into Watch This. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. So, Henry Cavill returning as Superman for future DC Comics movies. Now, after news of Zack Snyder's Justice League stunned many of DC Comics fans, the hits just kept on coming, and it's rumored that Henry Cavill will return as Superman for future product, for future um, movies and productions. Now, instead, it sounds like Cavill's Superman will operate in a similar capacity to Marvel's use of Nick Fury and the Hulk, appearing in films for a supporting role or even smaller cameos. The future of Cavill's Superman has not yet been fully decided, and it sounds like Warner Brothers and DC Comics are still figuring out where the character best fits in upcoming films. Now, in addition to this news, Zack Snyder posted an image of his cut of Justice League's take on Darkseid and confirmed the iconic supervillain will appear in the version that hits HBO Max next year. This comes after Ray Porter, the actor, confirmed that he is playing supervillain in unused portions of the film. So, with the fact that we have a confirmed Darkseid in this film, it makes me even more excited to watch this film next year Like I said, I'm probably going to have a watch party and we're going to sit back and watch it and maybe even have a discussion afterwards. There'll be some commentary going on here. Cobra Kai. Yes, I love Cobra Kai. Just so you know, I'm an 80s baby and Cobra Kai and Karate Kid is my jam. Strike hard, strike first, no mercy. Cobra Kai, the series, is leaving YouTube premium for a new streaming service. Now, YouTube's flagship scripted series, Cobra Kai, will be moving to a new streaming platform for its upcoming third season. The Google-owned online video service is in the process of releasing season three of the popular show to producing studios Sony Sony Pictures TV amid a retreat from premium original scripted programming. Sony TV had taken Cobra Kai out with all major streamers expressing interest, sources said, Now, the suitors that are rumored to be coming after Cobra Kai, of course, the two big ones, Netflix and Hulu. As you all know, the show stars the original actors, Ralph Macchio and William Zabka, as 
Daniel LaRusso and Johnny, respectively. J.K. Simmons contracted to appear in multiple Spider-Man movies as J. Jonah Jameson. I guess he's going to get those pictures of Spider-Man after all. So thanks to a recent interview with People TV, Simmons did reveal that he is under contract for more appearances as Jameson. When asked if fans will expect to see him in the next Spider-Man film, he said he wouldn't use the word expect, but he did say he is signed on to do multiple movies, so if Marvel wants to feature him in those films, he is all in. I personally was pretty, I wouldn't say shocked, but I was thrilled to see him at the end of Far From Home, reprising his role as J. Jonah. I mean, with the memes that plagued us for years of wanting pictures of Spider-Man, pictures of Spider-Man, I want pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> I think it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good look having him in the future Spider-Man films. Also, Star Wars Admiral Thrawn reportedly get a live action treatment. Now, Grand Admiral Thrawn might be getting a live-action treatment from Disney Plus as well. According to writer Daniel Richman, a live-action version of Thrawn is coming. Thrawn was created by Timothy Zahn and made his franchise debut in the Heir to the Empire novel. A member of the mysterious Chiss race, Thrawn is an Imperial military commander who took control of the Galactic Empire five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. Now, Thrawn is one of the most popular characters in Star Wars franchise who has yet to make a live action appearance. It's only been fairly recently that the character made an outside appearance of the Expanded Universe at all, the character making his debut in the third season of the animated Star Wars Rebels, when he was voiced by Lars Mikkelsen. I personally, I, yeah, I'm all for this one. I mean, that was a great book. Uh, Timothy Zahn does excellent work as far as Star Wars fiction. And um, it's just pretty much making Disney Plus the hub and the place for Star Wars content. The Star Wars content there at Disney Plus is really getting stacked. And we're going to see just a lot more coming, I believe. Let's go ahead and jump into some life. Peace, love, and video games! It's on like Donkey Kong! Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. Alright, so for Thumb Life News, the PS5 conference has been announced for June 4th. Sony has announced that a PS5 conference will be broadcasting on Thursday, June 4th. 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, and 9 p.m. UK. Confirmed on the PlayStation blog, the show will last around an hour and will be the first in a series of updates. As you might expect, we'll be seeing PS5 games shown off at the event. Sony hasn't specifically said that we'll see the PS5 unit itself, though. On the PS blog, PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan said the games coming to PS5 represent the best in the industry from innovative studios that span the globe. Studios both larger and smaller, those newer and those more established, all have been hard at work developing games that will showcase the potential of the hardware. I am personally excited. This is coming up next week. Um, I have no idea how I'm going to bring this news to you guys, but I'm going to try to bring it to you live as it happens most likely on the facebook page or even the instagram page maybe even twitter page and all three avenues that will bring this information live as possible and bring it to you as up to date as it happens if they show that unit please believe it's going to be the first thing i post onto the social media so please stay close you're going to see that first from me there's a review out for mortal kombat 11 i i thoroughly enjoyed this game the new DLC campaign is good, but it kind of left me wanting more. It's kind of like two games, like, like one whole game and then like a piece of a game, if you want to call it that. But it more than makes up for it as far as the lack of story with the characters that they put into the game. Uh, Fujin is dope. <laughs> He's one of the best characters I've ever played in the game. Um, even though Robocop is the more high profile character, he's a bit sluggish as far as his usage goes. But if you can get those combos together he is a force to be reckoned with trust me well y'all 
that about does it for me. I am going to get out of here. As usual, people, thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking with me. Be on the lookout for the upcoming First Friday Fights episode next week. Also, any of our live tweets or posts coming up for the PS5 conference. Follow us on the social medias for all of that, which is going to be on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs>